Hello and welcome to this history tutorial on the British sector of the Western Front. This is for Edexcel GCSE History Medicine in Britain. Today we will cover the work of the RAMC and the FANY and look at the part they played in the chain of evacuation. The fighting on the Western Front disrupted local transport networks which posed a problem when dealing with the large number of casualties of the war. With so many casualties on the Western Front, the importance of having medical facilities as close as possible was crucial. The Western Front mostly occupied rural territory that was far from large hospitals of the cities. The British Army had no choice but to set up a system for treating the significant number of casualties in the field surrounding the trenches. The Royal Army Medical Corps, RAMC, ran field ambulances. It is important to note, field ambulances were not vehicles. The RAMC field ambulances set up mobile medical stations. Each field ambulance could deal with 150 wounded men, but when major battles were taking place they would have to deal with many more. The field ambulance units did not have the facilities to tend to wounded men for more than a week. Men who had been treated would either be returned to their units if they were fit enough to fight, or they would be moved to the casualty clearing station by horse or motor ambulance. It was the RAMC field ambulances that created the chain of evacuation. It was obvious that men were much more likely to survive if they could receive treatment quickly. The RAMC therefore developed a system to move wounded men who had a chance of surviving to medical areas. This was called the chain of evacuation. Within the chain of evacuation, the regimental aid posts were located closest to the front line. They were set back from the front line by approximately 100 metres. Here a soldier would receive first aid. For soldiers who needed more treatment, they either walked or were carried by stretcher bearers to an advanced dressing station. Advanced dressing stations were ideally set up around 400 metres from the regimental aid posts, in tents, dugouts or large abandoned buildings. Main dressing stations were set up about a mile further back from the advanced dressing station. They collected injured men from the regimental aid posts using horse-drawn ambulances and stretcher bearers. Each dressing station would be staffed by 10 medical orderlies and a stretcher bearers of the RAMC. From 1915 there were also some nurses available. Seriously injured men would be moved onto a casualty clearing station. Casualty clearing stations collected seriously injured men from dressing stations using motor ambulance convoys. They were located a sufficient distance away from the front line to provide some safety from attack. They had surgical and medical wards in huts, nursing staff and were sometimes supported by mobile x-ray units. When wounded soldiers arrived they were divided into three groups. The walking wounded, who were patched up and then returned to the fighting. Those in need of hospital treatment, who were treated for any immediate life-threatening injuries and then transported to a base hospital. And those who were so severely wounded there was no chance of recovery. Men could be treated for up to four weeks here before being moved to a base hospital or sent back to the front line to continue fighting. The final part of the chain of evacuation was the base hospital. Base hospitals on the Western Front were located near the French and Belgian coast so that wounded men who were treated there would be close to the ports from which they could be transported home to Britain. These were designed to take up to 400 patients. They were often turned into specialist hospitals to treat common injuries and ailments, for example the effects of gas. They were set up in large buildings and were often close to transport networks. As casualty clearing stations began to treat more wounds, base hospitals became responsible for continuing treatment that was begun in the clearing station. This gave base hospitals the opportunity to experiment with new techniques, which once successful could also be used in the casualty clearing station. The FANY, First Aid Nursing Yeomanry Corps, played a key role in the transport of treatment of wounded soldiers. The women of the FANY were trained in first aid, veterinary skills, signalling and driving. They mainly worked as a field ambulance, moving wounded men between base hospitals, medical posts, trains, barges and hospital ships. The FANY had many roles. They ran a mobile soup kitchen and a mobile bathing vehicle staffed hospitals and convalescent homes, ran a hospital canteen and organised concerts for the troops. In summary, the RAMC set up a system to transport wounded soldiers with the aim of treating them as quickly and as efficiently as possible. The chain of evacuation had several stages. The regimental aid posts, closest to the front line, dressing stations, casualty clearing stations and finally the base hospitals which were located near the French and Belgian coastline. 
The work of the RAMC was supported by corps such as the FANY, who took on many roles within the chain of evacuation, including running soup kitchens, providing first aid and staffing hospitals and conval convalescent homes. The system at times became overwhelmed, particularly in major battles, however this system was generally efficient in treating soldiers on the Western Front. To get further help, visit history.outward.com, see your teacher in school, or check out quiz.outward.com for those sweet revision quizzes. You can also follow the Outward Humanities team on Twitter, at OGAT Humanities. Until next time, that was a little bit of history.